I was recently working on a really long and complex program and I needed to do something called a context switch where I have a number of different directories on a number of different disks that serve the same function and basically the problem was when I first ran it on one of the disks the directories didn't exist so I needed to create the directories if they didn't exist and not create them if they did exist. So due to a great insecurity about documentation I almost always write a test program to uh, test whether the code actually works as documented. <coughs> and another advantage of this is you can just take the test code and directly insert it into the big program and you already know the test code works. So that's a two-part principle that I've expounded a number of times in the past. But the two f methods I basically need in order to implement this were both in the directory class and they're both static methods which means you don't have to instantiate the class as an object you can just directly use them. And the two uh, methods are exists uh, which you pass a parameter of a directory name and if it that directory name exists it returns true and if it doesn't it returns false and uh, the other one is create directory which you also pass a directory name and it creates the directory so in order to test this I uh, created a form that has just two things on it, two controls a uh, text box for the subdirectory name and then a button that says create subdirectory and if we double click on this button to go into the code I basically uh, just put the uh, value that's in the txt new subdirectory uh, text field into a variable called subdir and then based on the other general principle I have which is always write a user interface as though the user is insane <laughs> I check whether there is in fact anything in that field so I do a subdir.length not equal to zero if it is equal to zero it means that the user didn't put anything into the field so I just pop up a message box that says you need to create a subdirectory to be created on and then I have a main underscore dir which is where I want to put the subdirectory and if the length isn't zero I call my main function which I can directly insert into my code which is create dir with a subdirectory name and if we look at this string constant I like to uh, by convention make string constants or any kind of constants all capital letters uh, separated by underscores for separate words so I have const string main underscore dir and then I have the i colon disk and a forward slash and the subdirectory name or the root directory name of test and there's several ways you could do this you actually could put a, an at sign here and then use a backslash and the at sign basically says ignore the backslash uh, don't treat it as an escape character so it's escape T which is a tab instead of a, a directory separator or you could not use the at sign and use two backslashes which says uh, this isn't an escape character this is an actual slash I want to put in there in a sense it is an escape character that says escape into just putting a backslash or you can be simple and just put a forward slash which also works it's the Unix versus the Windows conventions really backslash is Windows convention forward slash is a Unix convention but anyhow if I call the create subdur I basically create a fully qualified uh, directory name which I call fqdir and that's our string constant which is concatenated with the plus sign 
with a for forward slash and then the subdirectory name that gets passed to the function. And then I use the directory.exist static method to check whether this fully qualified directory name exists. And if it already exists, I just pop up a message box that says this directory already exists. And if it doesn't exist, I do a directory.create directory. And I pass it the fully qualified directory name. And then I pop up a message box that says this fully qualified directory name has been created. So the I directory we're talking about uh, already has the uh, test file on it. But if we go into it, we see there's no subdirectories in the, the test uh, root directory yet. So let's try compiling, well, first saving and then compiling and running this. And then if we put, say, a subdirectory name of added and press create subdirectory, it says i colon slash test slash added created. And we don't trust that though, so we're going to go into the directory and indeed the added subdirectory has been created. So let's try running this again without changing the value in it. Type create subdirectory and it says i colon slash test ta slash added already exists. So this function works exactly the way we want it. But another question I had is can you create multiple levels of subdirectories with one create directory call? And it occurred to me the simplest way to test that is just to go into the I disk and delete the main root directory. So now the test doesn't exist either. And now if we uh, minimize this and run the program again, uh, let's say add it again. although we're on the brink of risking only the name added can be created. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure it's not. And then do a create subdirectory and it says i colon slash test slash added created. So let's see if it actually was created. I come here and the test directory has been created. Go into the test directory and the added subdirectory has been created. So you can create multiple levels of directories using this code, which is useful so I don't have to worry about it and do some kind of recursion to create subdirectories. Well, I hope you enjoyed this uh, tutorial and learned a lot. And don't forget to subscribe.